Lacey Evans. Yeah. Turn heel on SmackDown. And uh, I don't know why it bites sometimes, but I think it's probably because I don't think this guy's a troll. I think he's just kind of, you know, you know what I'm saying? But uh, he couldn't understand why I wasn't angry about this. He, like, listens to every show. It's like, how do you listen to every show but not actually listen? I said on Monday, on Monday's show, when I was recapping the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, I said Lacey came out and nobody cared. Nobody cared about her at all. And anytime she tried to climb, they booed. So at this point, you may as well turn her heel. Did I not say that on this show? On this very show that you're listening to right now on Monday? Yes, I did. So in fact, when I said regarding her turn on Friday, ah, who cares? It's not inconsistent. It's consistent. Because here's the deal. They're incompetent. Do you understand? They don't know how to tell stories. They don't know how to make baby faces. You had... You had the easiest, the absolute easiest babyface character in Lacey Evans. After she did five weeks talking about her military career, her battles with drug abuse and... and Her fathers. Her fathers and, and suicide in the, the whole nine yards. You had the easiest babyface that ever got dropped in your lap, dropped in your lap. But you're so dumb... That you couldn't figure out how to do a babyface runner with her before you turned her heel. Bro, I know this is the Kurt Angle sort of deal, but you know what? You can do that whenever you want. What you should do is see if you can get her over as a babyface based on her life story first. And then, later, you can turn her heel. Well, they're so stupid that they couldn't figure out how to get her over as a babyface... People were already booing her three weeks in. So you know what? Who cares? Turn her heel. Which they did. She cut a great heel promo because they know how to get heat. You just call all these people at SmackDown stupid and they bite. They go, oh, boo, we're not stupid. Hook, line, and sinker. So anyway, great. Whatever. Who cares? She wasn't over as a baby face at all because they don't know what they're doing. You know what's funny? You ever thought about the fact that the guy at the very top is embroiled in scandal and he can't figure out he can't figure out how to book a nice person? You ever thought about that? Hmm. Well, I've thought about it many times. Then the other day, somebody was like, I think it was uh, Sean Ross Sapp may have uh, tweeted out that Vince has to go. And there were people like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said he's got to go. I'm like, What? Bro, I've said this guy's got to go before any of this happened. I've been saying it since 2018. Golly. Who wound me up that time? Wasn't you for once. (laughs) Well, I mean, look, from a... From a creative point of view, and from a atrophying fan point of view, because people talk about the ratings... Look at the last 10 years. Look at how many stars they've built. Look what they have to go back and constantly do over and over again. And the thing with WWE is it's always a pretty simple fix because they have the access to some incredible talent. And there's going to be talent that gets over in spite of how poorly they're booked. Whether it be, you know, Bianca Belair was unsinkable. I mean, there's no... period Rhea Ripley as bad as she's been booked since day one of being brought up to the main roster and being timid about poor Charlotte Flair when you have a woman that looks like a killer at a time where you need stars and all you got to do is go hey competition but they couldn't do that they had to play a story where they lose and, and like Liv Morgan over and over and over again they lose because that's what's going to get them over I hope they don't think that the cheers that Liv Morgan gets is because they were successful with what they've been doing with her. It's because fans really like her and they actually want to see her be in a good position. Dude. Not because your crappy booking had her beat over and over again where she comes out going, you know, I know I'm a loser, but if I get one more shot, man, maybe this time I can get it. Bro. Like, it's really tiring for you know, fans to hear from a baby. When fan. she came out on that show last night and they used the line... The eternal underdog. I was like, dude, she's you got the know, belt. Bro, 
That's the only thing you know how to book is an underdog, someone who always loses. Yeah. They lose and lose and lose and lose. And, thing, lose. and finally that's... you throw them a bone so everyone chants, you still got it, and then they're a baby face for like four weeks, and then you take the title off them and turn them heel. But that's not what makes an underdog. Like an underdog I know that. Is so, but that's like, that's the, you know, the, the Well, no, it is an underdog. It is an underdog because when you book someone to always lose – yeah, they're an underdog. Well, then they're, they're, I guess they never they're win. always a betting underdog. But yes. like an underdog is usually somebody who's plucky, who gets wins, who is always hanging in there. I mean, there's all these positive attributes that this person has that aren't overshadowed by the fact that they tend to lose all the time and they're a loser and they can't get over the hump and whatever it is and they're not a star. This is why we have Brock Lesnar coming back tonight when... It shouldn't be this way. You know, you've had all these people. Madcap, think about how long Riddick Moss has been there. Think about what that guy looks like. Think about the athlete that he is. And no, it was not going to be overnight because he came from the NFL and there was a lot that guy had to learn about wrestling. And I don't know, you know, again, working in WWE, how they do their matches. I'm not sure what he's picked up, but he's picked up enough of the WWE style that you know of to know he can go out there and be functional. How long has this guy been spinning wheels there? And now they kind of sort of have some idea on what to do with him. And he's kind of gotten a good reaction when he's poked his head out there. But like, yes, they still need to call him Madcap. But how long ago could you have been building a guy like that you would have been about a lot better off than, than where we're at because you would have already been a star. Bruh, Riddick Moss has been there as long as Aaliyah. You know Aaliyah's been there for nine years? Nine? Nine years. Nine, nine years. years. Did you watch the show on Friday, everybody? I did. There were so many geeks on that show. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Aaliyah was a geek. The New Day. The New Day, everybody. The New Day comes out. And uh, the new violent Viking Raiders are in the ring. I should save this for the Tom show, but I'm going to get some of it out now. The new violent Viking Raiders, which we have to be alerted every time they come out that they're violent. Because you, the viewer, are dumb. You're not going to get it if they don't tell you every single time they're on screen that they're violent. Just like you're not going to get that he's frickin' if they don't tell you every single time he's on screen that he's Seth frickin' Rollins. He's not just Seth Rollins, everybody. He's Seth frickin' Rollins. You got it? Freakin'. No, frickin'. Freaking. Is it freaking? Freaking. Who cares? One way or the other. Freaking. Man, they've Down done South, such a good job, I got it wrong. But anyway, maybe I'm dumb. So anyway, freaking Rollins, and then uh, the new violent Viking Raiders, they come out, and the new day, they're in the aisle, and they're just making one joke after another, and then they challenge the Viking Raiders to a fight. They jump in the ring and immediately get their ass kicked, beaten down, pummeled, and humiliated. I was like, God... <laughs> You can't even book the New Day as baby faces. They picked a fight and got destroyed by the new violent Viking Raiders. Freaking dumb is what it was. You know, 13 sure. minutes of wrestling on a two-hour wrestling show. It was 13 minutes plus before you actually got any anything new out of that show because they started with video packages and Roman Reigns and the Usos and Paul Heyman walking out to the ring. Then they go to break. It was like damn near the 15 minute mark of that show before Roman Reigns, after milking the crowd for a little bit, began speaking. It was really something else. And I know Phil. I do Tom, think that his uh, entrance was longer than all the matches on the show put together. It's 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 actually, I love it. it the longer it gets, it, it might as well be part of the gimmick now to see exactly how slow it's like. I know this reference won't mean anything to you it was like lee smith walking out of the bullpen like they would time it it would take him like seven minutes to walk not that far but the natty illuminati thing of you know i'm sure tom will have a nice play on those words from Rhonda. but Rhonda said she was there and she was not dressed to wrestle which okay fine you know a lot of people walk around in athletic gear i could see her doing that same thing it was a shirt and yoga pants i can buy but my, that but my question is you're walking around with that eye makeup all the time well apparently yeah, yeah this was is. the best thing on the show and uh the show was all downhill from there so uh i guess i can continue on to uh dana brooke beat becky lynch <laughs> And that, my friends, is Monday Night Raw.
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.